I bought a pair of fake common projects for $50 so that we can cut them apart and compare them to the real deal to see if they're worse, see if they're as good or maybe even better than the real deals. And I'll show you a few telltale signs on how to spot the difference between a fake pair and a real pair. As you can see, we're packing up and moving to Salt Lake and this will be the last video I film in this shop which is kind of sad. I didn't start the, the YouTube channel here, but this is where I, this is the shop that I really started focusing on the YouTube channel. So it's kind of sad to go, but I'm, I'm excited to get rid of the red brick. I'm, I'm pretty sick of it, but we're getting all packed up and it's going to take a while to, to get it all down to Salt Lake and reset up in the new shop. So I'll, I'm only going to be posting one video a week for the next couple weeks. So hang in there with me. And uh, now let's talk about these shoes and some of the differences I noticed right off of the bat. So the first one I noticed was, the shoe is actually quite a bit smaller. They're both, both of these are 43s, but if you line them up, it's quite a bit smaller, maybe half of an inch, quarter of an inch, somewhere in between there. Second thing I noticed was it's actually a little bit shorter too. So if you look at the height difference, there's maybe a quarter inch difference between the height of the shoe as well. So the last thing I noticed was just kind of off feel was that the sole feels a lot harder than the regular Common Projects that has a Margum outsole. This, this uh, is a knockoff Margum outsole, I'm assuming. So I, actually, let's do a test, this uh, durometer test and see how hard it is. So the fake ones, 12 to 13, the real deals, 12 to 13. So they're about the same hardness. They're just maybe, I don't really know how to explain the difference between two. So like the, the Margum outsoles kind of feel like one of those erasers. It kind of just feels like an eraser, actually. And it, you, it kind of um, flakes off a little bit, versus this just kind of feels like a rubber, typical rubber sole. And the last thing that I noticed was looking at the cross section, it looks like it's not a calfskin on the fakes, because um, there's a pretty solid grain pattern in there. And usually on the calfskin, it's really, really thin or really small, like on the common projects, but in, in cow leather, it's it's a grown-up cow, so the, the, the skin's thicker, so that grain pattern's thicker. So I believe this is a cow skin. And how to spot the fakes? Other than the things I just pointed out, which are kind of hard to tell in photos, I peek behind the insole, and I don't see any brass nails coming through, because if you look at the, if you look at the cut up, the cut in half common projects, you can see those little brass nails that are the lasting nails that when they tuck the upper underneath the shoe, they're pinned in place with these little brass nails, like right here. But on the fake ones, I don't see any brass nails poking through. So that's not gonna help out a ton because the insole on Common Projects is fairly permanent. You can get it up a little bit. So that's probably the most uh, effective way of telling a fake from the real deal and it's worth having, like if you're buying them on eBay, if you're buying them from a friend, it's worth asking to peel up the insert in here so that you can look at that fiber board and see if there's little brass nails poking through. Other than those things, they're a pretty true knockoff because sometimes you see really bad knockoffs. Oh, they're gone, I forgot my shoes are gone. Like when we did the Dr. Martin knockoffs, they are really clearly a knockoff or a fake. And uh, these are fairly, Good. And on that note, I hate knockoffs because I've personally had my products knocked off. Like my camera harness has been knocked off and it's a bummer because they steal your photos. They steal all the hard work that you've been working on and, and, re, and they just like take everything that you work so hard on and try to make a buck off of it. But the, the goal is to expose some of the things that make the real deal worth it and why you might want to stay away from a fake. So. Let's cut them in half and really see what the construction difference is and what's going on inside of these. Cause I'm really curious how true they are to the originals on the inside.
Okay, let's see what's inside the fakes. So very similar to the common projects construction wise, um, we got the non-removable but mostly removable insert that has the, the leather on top with the pour on type foam, it kind of feels like a memory foam that it's glued to. And then you got the fiberboard insole and then you go to a metal shank and then to a compressed cardboard that has a little bit of reinforcement on the bottom and then a little filler layer, just like on the common projects, and then the outsole. Another thing that's worth noting, um, and this is where you're gonna see some of the quality difference, it looks like this counter is just a reinforced like plastic counter. So this is the type that breaks really easy if you ever had a cheap pair of shoes and inside the heel, it just disintegrates and there's chunks and it makes the shoe really uncomfortable. That's this type of counter versus the Common Projects has a compressed leather counter. And to really see how this shoe is constructed and what else is going on inside of it, I'm gonna rip the rest of it apart, rip the guts out and see if we're missing anything else. Okay, I got all the guts ripped out of it and the most alarming thing I saw in here was when I was pulling the counter off, the glue didn't actually detach from the leather, but the top layer of pigment on the leather detached from the leather itself. So it doesn't matter how strong the glue is in a shoe, if the top layer of pigment or paint isn't well adhered to the actual leather, that's gonna be your biggest failing point. And what that means for the longevity of these shoes is it's not a big deal for the construction because you've got this stitch along the side that stitches the whole shoe together. But as soon as you start wearing these and you start getting these creases in here, you're gonna start seeing it flake off and really start chunking off. Uh, kind of like when you've seen like an, a really cheap fake leather couch, how it starts flaking off. That's what's gonna happen with this shoe. The next issue I saw was just the glue in general. The, it, everything kind of just fell apart. There wasn't much glue on there and whatever glue it was didn't seem to be very strong. And that usually wouldn't be too big of an issue because of this stitch, but because there's no brass nails that help keep this heel down, it's literally just as easy as this to get everything to start coming apart. As for the outsole though, the outsole is a pretty accurate um, replica of the Margam outsole. It's not quite as thick in some spots, but it's, it looks almost identical. It, it'd be hard to tell a difference other than it being the wrong size as well. And as for the leather thickness and everything, it's 1.4 millimeters, which is about the same as the Common Projects. It's exactly the same as the Common Projects. But the thing that's alarming is when I was, when I was kind of cutting out a spot to test the thickness, I actually I ripped a huge chunk off of it because I was, I was just trying to spread it apart to see if I get it in there. And it literally just ripped like paper. But the reason that this leather is so weak is more than likely the, the speed at which they tan this leather. Because if you really ramp up chrome tanning leather production, you can literally do it in a matter of two or three days. But the problem is it's, it's a chemical reaction and the faster that chemical reaction occurs, the weaker it's gonna make the leather. And that's why oak, like oak bark tan leather, it takes a year to make and it's, it's basically like a piece of wood because it's a really slow process and you don't lose a ton of um, strength versus a really fast chrome tan, you can literally rip it like paper, as far as I understand. So overall, for a $50 knockoff, it looks really close to the common projects, but when you start getting down to the nitty gritty of it, it's you get what you pay for. It's about a $50 shoe. It's, it's gonna come apart fairly quickly, and more importantly is this leather is so 
cheap that after a few times of wearing it, you're gonna start seeing the leather separating from the top coat of paint and it's gonna start flaking like crazy. And uh, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. And I'm excited to start doing some more of these fake ones because I really enjoy seeing how close these fakes can get to the real deal. And I enjoy seeing the quality difference and seeing do you get what you pay for when you buy the name brand or can you buy a cheap one that's a fake that's equivalent in value for a fraction of the price it's pretty interesting stuff so let me know what shoes what fake versions of shoes or boots you want me to start tearing apart and um i think that's everything so thanks for everything you guys do see ya